Hi, my name is Mark Brown with Pony Boy Pop Art. Today we're going to be going over how to paint Dragon Ball Z's cooler. This is an awesome model like all of them by Nacho Busto and can be found on a CG Trader page. And uh, today we're going to be going over how I painted him, printed him, and uh, got him like this. So stay tuned, have fun, and uh, follow along. All right, let's see how we do here. Just gonna start lightly just manipulating these. Oh, that's still a little too tight. I'm gonna cut up here and I like to cut very close to the raft just because I'm not positive where my piece is and I know at some point it's going to be pretty close to the raft so if I just come up here and kind of snip away around the raft and usually pull it apart and if you'll notice I tried to orient it so that most of the support work was right under here and that's where I've got most of my bumps I can sand that and not worry about how the uh, how the end look is but mostly we've got really nice smooth texture and where we don't we'll just work on that a little bit with the sandpaper some of these supports can be a real pain and I try to orient my structure as much as possible to not have them tight up against the model because they will leave a little bit of a marring there and you're going to have to sand that off or grind it off or something. And you risk the chance of actually putting a hole or crack in your model itself when you're cutting this up. So if you can orient the support so that they don't do this that's awesome I also had better support settings for uh, Chidu box or however you pronounce that on my laptop but my laptop hard drive died so sadly I did not document them I need to go back and take a look at where I got them from because there is one gentleman out there that really gave some good updates on how he had his where it minimizes the contact points and minimizes the amount of contact in those contact points so both of those are huge when you're removing supports and not having all these kind of rough little nubs on there just going to be doing this for a while so I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. So I had a bit of a false start there because the uh, drain holes from uh, Cooler's Bust were still leaking and uh, you can see it's still leaking a little bit at the top here so I'm going to dry that off. But um, at this point I am wanting to glue the pieces together before I cure them uh, I've had issues before with the Elegoo resin that uh, shrinks pretty uh, pretty significantly and sometimes it can end up shrinking just a little bit differently between the pieces. So what I'm wanting to do now is before I cure it just make sure everything lines up and where it doesn't line up perfectly and also make sure that it's done dripping. Where it doesn't line up perfectly I'm going to sand down and get that cleaned off so that we can get those in place, glued together, and then start curing. I actually uh, switched over, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm trying Sariatech. Um, that's what this is, Sariatech Gray. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, the quality of it, and the, um, the print has come out really well. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and start clearing off some of these little bits um, just to get them to mount a little more flush and then 
take my super glue and glue these together and also put a dot of glue up and uh, glue up those drain holes so that we can stop them from draining. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Wanted to bring you guys up to speed. My phone had died yesterday and so I had to finish up a little bit while I was offline. Um, what we've got is cooler is glued together and um, cleaned up most of his pock marks uh, from the support so I'm still doing that right now got a little more sanding to do and then I've also been going taking the sanding paper and putting it up under his armor um, as we know coolers armor is uh, really awesome and uh, kind of floats clearly above his body so we want to make sure that there's absolutely no support structure left under there so that there's a really clean look to it when we uh, when we have the model done. Next thing I'm going to do after sanding is fill in these gaps here with some of my modeling paste. This Liquitex the modeling paste works awesome and you'll be seeing that in just a few minutes. And um, we've already got his base printed out. I've printed that in wood. I think that's going to give a nice feel to it. And um, sadly, I realized I had not been uh, um, taking good care of what my measurements were when I scaled this guy. And I think I scaled him at 115%. Uh, apparently, I wasn't quite the same when I printed the wood out on my ender. And so his uh, marks for his uh, posts did not line up. So I had to grind that down. I'm pretty sure that's on me, not on the designer. So... Um, give yourself a shot, but just make sure that when you're printing the pieces out, you've uh, been consistent on your scaling. So uh, we'll uh, catch back in a few minutes when I start putting the modeling paste on, and uh, until then, I'm just gonna do a little more sanding on this guy, and just kind of, uh, as I said, get rid of some of these bumps on here. Okay, I've got him cleaned up pretty well, um, and we'll uh, do final cleanup once we've got him primed. But for the moment, I've got to fill in some of these cracks. Um, they glued together really nicely, but um, you know, once there's once it's together, it always forms just a little imperfectly. So I like to just grab a little bit of this modeling paste and put a dab on my brush, and then just go in and fill in any of the cracks. really kind of just rough pasted in at the moment. Just because we're trying to fill in as much as we can. And then once you've got it, sorry, once you've got it filled in, then we can tap it with our, uh, get a little water on our brush down here and just paint over that. And it gets nice and smooth. So we're just going to do that again through each of the uh, cracks and joints up here and get him a, a nice solid figure. So I just wanted to reiterate what I've done is taken the uh, brush and just filled in all the cracks as much as I could. And now I'm going to go over them and just paint with water and a little wet brush and then wipe the excess off on the paper towel come back again, move around, and just smooth this all out. And the end goal is to have maybe a soft line there, but no hard gap clearly, so that we're uh, um, basically hid that joint as much as possible. Now that I'm done, what I'm doing is just wiping them down with the uh, little paper towel and getting all of the wet paste off of there. I don't want it to be left in clumps at all because it'll dry up and then uh, leave a rough spot like that would. So we want to just either rub it off with paper towel or just your fingers and just make sure that we've got our gaps still filled in nicely now and uh, nothing left over to leave any clumping. I've still got some under his chin that I need to take care of but other than that, I think we're pretty good. 
and ready to take him over and prime him up, I think. So one thing I noticed here was that I did have a small fail on one of the horns on his head. Uh, you'll notice that they all come to a nice point except the one on the far right of the screen there. So what I've done is grabbed a this two-part sculpting epoxy, which is awesome stuff. Take just a little pinch of each of them and rub them, squish them together, and basically get them to be a uniform gray color instead of their individual colors. <clears throat> and then we're going to just model it up the way we want and throw it on the tip there. So let's see if we can just give him a nice point like he should have had in the first place. I think we can. I think I can. I think I can, right? Hmm. I think my fingers are a little too sticky at the moment. Probably should have wore gloves for that. Oh, now we're starting to talk here. Probably didn't need to bore you guys with sitting on this the entire time. But what I'm going to do is continue to work this into shape and then get a little bit of water on my fingers and smooth it out. Because this stuff is kind of like the modeling putty. It smooths out really well with water. And already this is starting to take a little better shape, isn't it? Yeah. I think once I uh, smooth that out with water and then we prime this up, we'll be to a point where we never know. And that's what we're looking for. Alright, I think that came out pretty well. So we'll take it over, prime it up, and uh, if you don't tell anyone, I won't, right? Cool. So he's ready to be primed up. As uh, always, I like to use the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 filler, filler and Sandable Primer. This is just awesome stuff. Goes on really easy and allows you to smooth out with even just your fingers. Um, so we'll just put shape to it, which I should have done at the beginning. And boom, those joints that we went over with uh, white paste just disappear. I'll lean him up so he's not touching much if possible. And hit the back. And that is starting to look like the cooler that we've all come to know and fear. I am just finishing up masking him or taping him off. And what we're doing is about to paint him purple. Anywhere that is still has white areas showing through, like right here. Um, we would just want to get those masked off and uh, taped so that when we get him painted purple that will not show through and we can uh, not have to worry about that trying to bleed through the white when we go back over and spray the white areas. So let's see if I can get this. Hey, there we go. Alright, let's try this up. Just grabbing a little bit of purple paint. Try the back side first just to make sure you don't have any issues. As a matter of fact, over here. Okay, looks good. Side. 
All right, we're gonna give that about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna peel the tape off and see how we did. So I have to admit, um, taking the uh, tape off after I've done a, a big spray paint job is almost exciting to me as unboxing a, a new thing that uh, came in the mail from Amazon. It's very gratifying. You see the uh, immediately the stark difference of how the model looks with the before and after, so to speak, of your spray paint. And as I note in the uh, any of my other videos, do not despair if you see, oh, I didn't do a perfect job of spray painting. Yeah, that's okay. You got the majority, and that's all we're trying to get. We've got a nice base coverage over most of his body. Got a couple of touch-ups here I need to do. Um, oops, sorry. There we go. A couple of touch-ups that we'll need to do here, but uh, the majority of him has got a nice base. So actually, we're going to take it and spray it down with um, some matte enamel at this point to lock this in and just um, get that on uh, really locked in well. Uh, otherwise, you can have like fingerprints just start to peel the paint away and that type of thing. And we want to avoid that, of course. So I'm going to just prop him up and uh, grab some matte enamel and give him a little spray down. Yeah, it turns out I'm actually out of matte. I'm going to have to stop at the hardware store. But I've got some satin clear here. And truthfully, for this guy, I think satin's going to work pretty well. So we'll just go ahead and hit the uh, purple parts. Make sure that we've got it all nice base coverage. Spin them around. Rinse and repeat, as they say. And once we've got a nice coverage on them, we're going to wait about 20 minutes for that to dry. Try not to muck about with our personally made horn, which is still needing a cure. And lock that in some more. There we go. And we'll check back out. Okay, so we've got cooler uh, spray painted. We weren't looking to get perfect, so don't uh, don't kick yourself if you're noticing any gaps or things like that where you didn't get the purple. Um, as I like to say, we're just trying to 80-20 this. We wanted to get a, a large percentage of him hit so that we could start to see the, the shape and form that he's going to start to take here. And we're going to continue that now with the next major color, and that is all the white. So I've got some acrylic. I had actually debated on taping him off and pulling spray paint back out because we really want this to have a high gloss, massive, plasticky kind of look and feel because that's really what he ends up having. Um, but I think that we're going to be able to get that same effect with just some titanium white acrylic and then going over that with a gloss finish. So we're going to go ahead and put down a brush here. I wanted a kind of tight brush because we're wanting to keep into the details, so I'm going to start on the back just in case I mess up. I've got less issues to deal with and start taking a look. And for sure that is going to be the right way to go about this. I can already see that it's starting to bleed through a little bit. We're going to have to do two coats on here most likely, but um, just stay tuned and we'll see how this goes. Remember on um, painting 3D models is that unlike a painting that's hanging on a wall, you have no idea how the person that is looking at this is going to come at it. They may be looking from the side, they may get really curious and look at it from the bottom. And so you need to do the same when you're painting it and you need to, to realize they can come at this from any angle, so you need to also look at it from any angle. So when I do that, I do notice that, for instance, down in here, there was areas where obviously the spray paint just didn't get because I had it taped off. So those are things we need to watch for, and 
I'm just going to keep going over and doing all the major white areas. Remember to, to look at back at your reference image. If you're not sure if something needs to be painted white, uh, don't get cocky. Paint it, uh, or look first at the reference image, then paint appropriately. So, I'm going to pause here and uh, keep painting this up, looking at my reference image, and then uh, come back to you. So as often happens when I'm working on a project that I've had to step away from and come back to, I totally forgot about our um, rework on uh, Cooler's horn here. And I just wanted to show you, I've taken some sandpaper now that it's hardened up and just sanded it down. And there's a, still a little bit of a lip there, but I think that really that's going to primarily disappear. And uh, for the most part, you're your eye won't go to it which is really all we're looking for and um, I believe that that's going to be now that it's sanded down um, basically going to hide the uh, the printing gaff that uh, we had and would have caused us to do a reprint on the entire head so just wanted to share that with you before we get that painted up so I just figured I'd check back in with you um, I'm just continuing to paint him up here um, again, I am not trying to be perfect on this round. We are looking for that 80-20 concept, um, but we're just wanting to cover as much of um, our areas as possible, remembering to look at it from different ways. The uh, underside of his armor here, for instance, sorry, it was blanking as I painted. Um, was really dark wanted to get that get in there give that a nice white so no matter how you look at it you know this is made of some super strong white material and uh and who knows maybe it's much like the abs like material that he's printed out of here but um anyways i digress i'm going to keep painting up all right, I'm, we're not trying to uh, hit what looks like professional at this level yet. We're just trying to get mass coverage, and we are really able to see the delineations now of where our, um, our white areas are and our purple areas. So I'm going to let this dry. Usually I would uh, spray it down with enamel, but I've had uh, such a light coating of the white that I'm actually going to just let it dry and then go back over it with another coat of white before we... Hit, the, uh, hit it with the enamel. And then we will go back with the purple and get any of the areas that were like down in here that needed to get spray paint but didn't get it. Or over here where we went back over it with white. And um, we'll just basically keep doing a little bit of the back and forth so that we get our white and our purple lines completely hit. And at the same time we'll pop out these little um, I don't know what those little bubbles are called, but those little purple bubbles that uh, um, decorate his armor. And we will continue to go from there. Alright, so while Cooler's in between coats, I figured we'll start to work on his base here. Um, basically, we want to have this be a uh, really desolate terrain type of feel. Um, again, I really loved the Tiance wood color uh, PLA, or actually wood PLA, and um, it's definitely got the feel that's your, that you're wanting here. But we're just going to lighten this up, so what I've got is some buttermilk acrylic, and I'm just going to really water this down a lot to thin it out. I'm just going to keep grabbing some more water from my brush. You notice again, um, as always, I use the top end palettes. This one was obtained um, two part. Uh, top here and the bottom right next to it was both came from the same takeout container. So that's handy. Don't need to go and pay any money for palettes when you can just get them for free. So I'm just going to water this down. Or, sorry, whiten this down.
And you notice it's spilling over a little bit, that's okay. Just really trying to bleach out this whole feel and actually trying to bring it back out so that you still see some of that core wood underneath but that it's just got a very uh, sun bleached look to it like you know it's been a desolate planet for eons and any place that I see that it's still a little too bright I'll probably just grab a little water here and bring that back down you notice it'll create a nice little cascade and then start to spread that out so I'm just going to keep doing this effect throughout the rest here and if any of you are curious I don't know I wonder how you knew that that was going to work out like that I didn't I'm just kind of uh, experimenting I've used the light buttermilk a lot before for making bleached out stuff I've never used it on this wood and like I said I really wanted the wood to still kind of come through but just not as starkly as it was so figured out a little white wash will add to it and the buttermilk kind of gives a uh, natural bone or uh, a kind of earthy feel to it so I'm just going to keep going like that so now that I've got the whitewash on here, I've uh, decided, you know, some of it's a little too st uh, intense of a wash. I really want to back that off, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a wipe down here. And a little bit of dab in other places. And so now, I've got a little more mix and variation. The rocks I've left really high up, as far as, uh, sorry, really uh, white. And I'm going to just go back a little bit more in some of these areas that I've dabbed. And I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. So now what I've got is nothing too stark, nothing too night bright, nothing too dark, you know, just a bunch of variations. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down and then uh, we're going to weather this up and get a little more uh, realism added to it so that when Cooler gets his spot, he will look immediately amazing. So like with everything else, uh, when I'm getting ready to uh, lock down my colors, I'm going to hit it with some matte enamel. Um, in this case, uh, I actually ran out of my normal mat and haven't been able to make it to the hardware store, so I'm using the UV resistant. Um, but this is going to be um, just a, a nice little coat to lock those colors in there. And. At the side as well. All right, now we're going to give that a few minutes and uh, let it dry, and then we'll uh, come back and do some more stuff to it. So now that the uh, colors are locked in here, I wanted to take a quick peek and let's see cooler sitting on the base here i don't remember which way he faces but the point is is it's um this is still not quite what i want to uh have as far as his look there so i'm going to add a little more of that wash of the light buttermilk on there and Let's see if we can get that to uh, look any better here.
Yeah, I think I was just going too easy on it last time. But that's good, because one of the things we want is multiple layers. So, having some areas that don't have much of a wash at all, having other areas that are moderately washed, having some that are a complete mix because of just when and how the brush hit it, that's all actually good because it adds to the realism and it helps distract the eye and helps keep the uh, helps keep the illusion going. So I'm just going to keep adding some of this back in, and especially on the rocks, I really want to get them more bleached than I did the first time. Remember again, you never know how they're going to be looking at this. It's probably not going to be looking at it from un, uh, on top looking straight down. So remember you need to hold the model and look at it in different ways to see how they're going to look at it when the end user perceives it. times where you thought you made a mistake and then Bob Ross lingo just turned out to be a happy little accident. All right. I think that's better. And yeah, looking at our friend here, I think it's going to suit him more. Those lighter colors are just going to help make the white in him pop out really intensely. And that's that's what we're shooting for. Don't want to uh, overpower it, but we also want to help and give a full assist to him. So once again, let, let this dry. Take it over, lock in the colors, and then we will do the weathering. So... Where we were earlier was um, we definitely want to do another coat of uh, acrylic on Cooler himself, um, but we also needed to do some touch-ups of uh, purple and um, uh, plus hitting these bubbles here and uh, giving them the purple. Now, usually I would try to find the uh, an acrylic that matched what I chose for the spray paint, but I wanted to share a tip here that um, my buddy Joe Brancic over at Likeness 3D, he's uh, been my sensei, so to speak, for painting. He taught me this little trick. If you need the same color spray paint that you used for your spray paint, then just use it. So spray a little into your cap. You don't need much. And off you go. And no concerns about color matching, obviously, because it's the same spray paint that I used for the base earlier. So now I can just get right in there where I want and clean up some of those lines the tighter you can get a hard line the easier it's going to be for your mind to help uh, or for you to help on that illusion that this is a real object your eye is really good at seeing things and catching little things. You know, that's a uh, little brush strokes like this that are imperfect. You know, that's the first thing that your eye is going to go see. 
So I'm actually going to come back and do some of those with even a tighter brush. But right now I just want to get most of the uh, purple here painted. And then we'll come up to some of these others. The spray paint it goes a long way, so especially when you're doing this detail work, so you don't need much to be able to get in and start working on things. So I'm going to keep going on this, but I just wanted to share that technique with you, and I'll be back. At this point, we've got uh, him pretty well set. I'm uh, actually got handheld for a moment, so I could walk around and uh, just give a show I'm going to go ahead and take them over and lock in uh, the colors that we've got here now and we'll be uh, moving on as I was looking at cooler on his base a um, couple of things I realized one I definitely uh, miss scaled the uh, PLA print of the base um, I think I was just like uh, five percent off or something of that sort where it's um the pegs just aren't lining up quite right and i'm i'm sure that's not from nacho's uh um design but from my uh printing from the resin and the pla for the different parts so a uh, little note to yourselves be sure to write down what your scaling is before you generate all of your pieces either way um nacho's got a nice space for this uh for cooler here but I really wanted to beef it up and give it a little more um, spacing, especially with the tail that's going to be coming out there. So I had uh, one of these plaques that I had picked up at Michael's uh, for like a dollar or something like that. And what we're going to do is get it ready to um, sit right under here. What I figure we'll do is... We're going to prime this up and then paint it with some um, fake stone look to it and then um, get the bottom ring there of Cooler's base to match and then mount these together and we'll have a, a really serious base for, for our piece. So we're going to get ready to go on that. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a can of uh, Rust-Oleum Filler Sandable Primer and just give our base a nice cover here just found out that the wood on its own will soak up and show through way too much for the uh, for really anything that you're going to do on your base itself so there we go we're going to let that dry now and uh, come back to it I'm going to start by giving it a just a base stone color and look to it here. Want to make sure I hit the outer rims. Okay. And now that I've got a base, I really want to lighten up with this other color. I do apologize the light here where my overhead lights went out just today but I'm going to use this to kind of lighten it up and match the more of the color that we're going to be using on the base for cooler itself I think that's going to look great so we're going to let this dry and then spray it down with matte enamel and then we can mount the cooler base to this base and then uh, kind of get a better feel of what it's going to look like and go from there. Okay, so we have the bottom of the base um, drawing with the stone effects on it and meanwhile I'm going to do just a little bit of um, weathering and dirtying up to the uh, other base here. I want to just kind of get this aged up a little bit and a little darker in general so that we can uh, then work on this bit here and get it ready to match up. So I'm just kind of, as we mentioned before, just 
grabbing in this case a little bit of um, black oil and some water really getting it uh, I think you can see that there really thinned out and then painting over the cracks and crevice areas and letting it just sink into those and sometimes like this just actually letting it pool up so we can actually get a little extra depth to it Some of these I went over a little too much, so I'm just gonna rub them back off with some paper towel there. And definitely want to go deep into the crevice ones. Okay. Now we're going to set that aside. Alright, while we let those dry, we're going to come back and do some of the touch-ups on cooler that uh, we've been needing to do. And to some degree I've been avoiding them, but now's the time. So start with, I need to do a little bit of white here onto the space. Let's see if I can actually do this for you to be able to see it. Now at this point is where I really need to have strong, sharp lines. Up till now, we've been kind of uh, just looking to get as much paint onto the body as possible. But at this point, we really need to start getting hard, crisp lines where they're supposed to be crisp, and then making sure that we've gotten rid of crisp lines where they shouldn't be. And basically, you're going to know that from your model with Cooler, he has a lot of actual very crisp lines and that's kind of part of what makes him him. And so we need to recognize that and honor that. And so this is what I'm gonna do now is just spend a lot of time going through here and anywhere that I'm seeing a a soft edge or a bleed over or something of that sort and I'm going to go ahead and paint that up and keep going. Okay at this point I believe I have the white uh, just about as set as I'm going to be able to get on him and um, I've got some still touch-ups to do in the purple but I'm going to take him over and lock him down and uh, then we'll come back and do a little bit of touch-ups on the purple and uh, get the red in the eyes there. And um, I think we'll be able to start uh, adding some weathering and uh, additional uh, depth into his coloring. I've uh, taken our base here and just taped it up. I've done a um, very rough job and I've done that on purpose. Um, basically I want the, uh, we're going to spray this with that kind of sand texture and I want it to seep up a little bit onto the um, the rock and um, a little bit into the 
the foreground so that it blends in a little more naturally. So we're just gonna, again, take this uh, stone accent here and Okay, it does go on a, have to go on a little thick on that first coat there, um, but then I'm going to come back, let it dry, and then go over one more time, just a little bit lighter, and uh, give just a, a little speckling on top, and it'll look great. All right, um, I want to just take a moment and dot in Cooler's eyes here. I got that red out. I've got, of course, way more red than I needed. But I'm just going to try and detail in his red eyes. I'm trying not to have mine blur up at the time. Okay, I believe I got them. Okay, for our purple, I'm going to do this little trick again. Okay, let's see if I can just dump it right there. Oh, look at that. And then we get a couple immediate touch ups we can do. Okay. I'm going to uh, not bore you with this anymore and. Uh, Going to do some purple touch-ups here. Okay, at this point, I believe I've got him just about as good as I'm going to be able to get him. Um, he is tightened up on his uh, white, purple, and red. And at this point, I'm going to take him, lock him down on his colors, and then we will weather him up and uh, get him ready for mounting. All right, I do apologize. My phone uh, died on me last night, and... Um, wasn't able to tape this, but I've taken some JB Weld uh, plastic bonder and just mixed a little bit up on my handy dandy palette and spread that on under the uh, uh, base that Nacho had designed and then put it on um, to our base here. And as we see, it is all one nice unit and all looks like it was just basically made for it to each other. So um, we're just going to finish up on cooler here and uh, weathering him up and then we'll get him mounted and call him done. Okay, it's time to weather up cooler. I've got some black oil, water-based oil paint here. And I'm just going to uh, get a little bit wet, and, uh, wet down and spread out a little here. And then what I want to do is get my brush, my brush very dry and come back and just basically seeing how, that it's just leaving a little bit of uh, kind of a mud there versus a hard black opaque coating on there. And again, we'll start with the back reason I'm going with black here is I usually would start with burnt umber, but 
I just I'm afraid that the brown on his purple would just not look very well so what I wanted to do is go into some of the areas where I think that some dirt and uh, grime might accumulate on him and he's probably not that uh, not that good about keeping himself clean and then just kind of spreading it out a little bit from there Yeah, already I've got a little deeper and darker than I want. Because the thing about Cooler is, is he does have a really stark white. So I'm going to wipe off some of that. I think I even need to wet that down a little. There we go, that's better. So basically just leaving a little kind of a grunge line, so to speak, around his joint there. And I'm going to now do that around some of these other areas. And basically just around the joints, I think. I want to keep the, the primary of his body uh, very strong white. Um, maybe in some of the crease lines just to help give them a little extra definition, but that's about it. Obviously, I can't just leave hard lines there because he wouldn't have any hard lines of any sort than a splash of mud or something. <laughs> and again, very light here. I do want him primarily to be a whole lot of white and purple with not much else really. Just a little accent. So we just, as we've discussed before on different videos, the, uh, the big thing with your painting your object is to get a concept of who this person is and why they are where they're at. So for instance, Cooler here is obviously getting ready for a big showdown, most likely with Goku, but could be with a couple other people. But we're going to uh, want him to have been already traveling around a little bit, going from planet to planet, tromping around in various mud and dirty areas of wherever he's been going, looking for someone to tackle. And what we need to do is just kind of help, help the viewer see what he's been up to. And so part of that is seeing some of these effects like, well, obviously he's been tromping through mud. Or one uh, tip I wanted to share was, you'll notice I am going a little heavy around the um, little orbs that he's got on him. And I'm also taking it and really uh, getting it deep into the crevices. I'm going to wipe some of that excess off, um, but the getting it into any of these um, crevice lines or crease lines really helps accentuate them. And um, the going around the uh, the little orbs there is helping hide anywhere where I was not perfectly clean on my white versus purple delineation. And we definitely want that to be seeming very crisp. So the way we're doing that is, is to simply make it dirty. And at that point, um, your mind just assumes that it would be crisp because it knows it's supposed to be. But it's obviously just got kind of grunged up. Again, I'm going to wipe some of the excess off on there. But 
when it gets into the crease lines and all that, then that's just going to help uh, illustrate what we're wanting and uh, hopefully not look too off once we've done our wipe down. Okay, he is definitely way dirtier than I want him to be at this point, but that's a good thing. I've got uh, a lot of black all in the areas that I want to have black. So now what I'm going to do is take a Q-tip here and just start rubbing off some of the areas that I don't want so much of that black on. And what you see here is it just pulls it right off. And I can start getting that back a little less grungy. I've pulled out a couple of Q-tips. These uh, soak it up very quickly. You also may want to just go with some paper towel and just wipe down some of the areas that were overly hard hit. And then just alternate between Q-tip and paper towel for whatever you need, either a detail area, get the Q-tip out, or uh, big swaths, take your paper towel. And basically what we're wanting to do is leave that shadowing down into the, deep into the creases, but then take some of the excess off so that it's really just acting more as a highlight for his uh, the lines in him versus a full shading of him. So I'm going to just keep going on this and I will come back. If you've got uh, areas that are still being a little stubborn um, you can take your q-tip and just dip it in some water and then Take that and go back over and that should really start to lift off that oil that you just laid down and you can kind of go a little a uh, little bit on the surgical side so one thing that I've uh, noticed I would, had hoped was going to get resolved here is this drain hole right in the center of his forehead. I thought that I'd plugged that up well enough earlier, but apparently not. So I'm just gonna go through, go over and take a little dot of super glue. Fill it in there. Now when I look at this from the side, I can see that this dot of super glue is weld up and it's going to make a mess if I just leave it like that. So I'm not. I'm going to take a, another little bit of Q-tip here and just smooth over that. So now hopefully that'll fill in nice and um, at that point we can gloss that whole thing up. I've got cooler sitting on the base here. Again, I do apologize to Nacho that I didn't uh, size that base properly, so I'm just kind of fitting on as best as I can. Um, but it looks like it's going to do pretty well there. So what I'm going to do is mix up some uh, Gorilla Glue epoxy. I know we did use the uh, JB Weld earlier, but as you note, that black or that uh, dries solid black. And I really don't want that distracting of a color 
oozing out from under his feet. So what I'm gonna do is go with this clear epoxy here. Just mix it up nice. And then I'll put some on that post of the base. And then some on the bottom of his, both of his feet. Unfortunately, because that uh, was resized improperly and the uh, other post came off, basically I just gotta get him to have glue on all of his little pods of his feet and then we'll just get him to stick one way or another. Okay, now I'm just going to line them up there, and then, oh, mm -hmm. line them up and okay, this should set in five minutes. So we'll give ourselves a five minute timer and check back on them. So there you go. Dragon Ball Z's Cooler by Nacho Busto. Another great model by him. Fun one to print and just as fun to paint. I hope you guys have fun and uh, maybe learn some techniques or just uh, pick something up out of how to print and paint a uh, model and overall I just hope you enjoyed and had fun so take care everyone and until next time follow along give a big shout out to Nacho Busto and uh, follow on Pony Boy Pop Art and uh, on Instagram YouTube and all of the best thanks take care <laughs>